cylinder and dial quick change can be started at any time during normal knitting operation. Once the machine is stopped, the yarn can be cut and the machine can be moved a few inches to press the stitches off the needles. At this point, the cylinder and dial cam boxes as well as the cylinder and dial needles can now be removed from the machine. It is best to lay out the cylinder and dial cam boxes in a secure and safe way. The support frame has to be located in front of the doff gate and secured to the machine legs as shown. Shown here are all the necessary tools needed for the quick change. The dial height has to be set to 2.5 millimeters. The two metal covers located below the cylinder can now be removed. The fabric spreader and the fabric light bulb can be taken off the machine. The air pipes connected to the rotating joint and the air pipe going to the center of the dial can be disconnected. The electrical connection and the support bracket can be removed. The gating adjustment bolt, which is held in place by a small set screw, needs to be taken out. The cylinder is held in position by six plates, which need to be dropped down. The cylinder hold-down screws can now be removed. The dial disc indicator screws should be backed off about one-tenth millimeter to make the installation of the new dial disc easier. The adjustment blocks, which are stamped with a number for proper relocating, can be removed. The quick change support rods are put in place at the support frame. The cylinder has to be turned into the proper position so the support rods can slide into the support ring cutouts. The support rods will come to rest on the other side of the cylinder support ring. Four protective pads are placed between the cylinder and the dowel disc. The eccentric action of the support rods will raise the cylinder just a fraction off the cylinder height shims. The cylinder is now resting on the support rods and the cylinder shims now can be removed. A support cross is used to lower the dial disc from the dial hub onto the cylinder. The support cross is placed directly under the dial disc and has to make direct contact with the dial disc. The dial mounting screws can be removed. By lowering the support cross, the dial disc will come to rest on the protective pads previously placed between the cylinder and the dial. The support cross should now be removed from the machine. By slightly pushing against the cylinder, both cylinder and dial are being pushed out of the machine and ready to be lifted off the support rods. A set of cylinder and dial is placed on the support rods and the installation process can start. The measurements of the dial height adjustment screws need to be transferred from the old dial disc to the new dial disc. Four master adjustment screws are held in place by a set screw and only these four screws are used to preset the dial cam box clearance. The dimension is taken from the surface of the dial disc to the top edge of the adjustment screw. The location of each adjustment screw should be marked on the new dial disc with a colored marker. The new cylinder and dial are now pushed back into the machine. The cylinder mounting screws can now be put back into place. 
The cylinder height shares are placed around the cylinder mounting screws. The cylinder should now come to rest on the cylinder support ring. The dowel support cross is used again to remount the dowel disc in the proper location. By turning the nut just below the support cross, the dowel disc will be lifted up against the dowel hub. The dowel mounting screws can now be put in place to secure the dowel disc to the hub. After all dial mounting screws are in place, the support cross can be removed from the machine. At this point, the dial disc rests only on four master adjustment screws. All other adjustment screws can now be turned so far until they come to rest on the dial hub. The support rods can now be removed from the machine. The four brackets that hold the dial disc in the center should now be reinstalled. The plates which are used to hold the cylinder in the center can be pushed again and locked into place. The four protective pads can be removed. The cylinder can now be centered. The runout of the cylinder height has to be checked. Both dimensions should come as close as possible to the manufacturer's specifications. The dial disc also has to be centered and leveled to manufacturer specification. The leveling of the dial disc is done with the help of a special insert which is supplied with each quick change conversion. After the dial disc has been leveled, it is necessary to check for the proper clearance between the dial disc and the dial cam boxes. The cylinder cover plates can be reinstalled. The gating adjustment bolt is put back into place. The light fixture assembly and fabric spreader support bracket can now be screwed back onto the dial hub. The plug for the fabric light and the air hose can be reconnected. The fabric spreader can be reinstalled. The position of the yarn carrier has to be readjusted if there is a change in the needle hook size. The cylinder and dial quick change has now been completed. Thank you.